So we're here with uh, Evan Corey, um, LMU's uh, first men's volleyball All-American uh, 2020 graduate. Uh, Evan, uh, you know, you've obviously had um, some success here recently on the beach tour. Um, if you could just let's go ahead and back things up um, to 2020. Uh, obviously, uh, that's when everything kind of came to a halt in March. And you wrapped up your LMU career in the most unusual of ways and under bizarre kind of circumstances. If you could just kind of talk about uh, how that transition was, you know, you're a student athlete, uh, season gets halted um, abruptly, you're in the middle of practice. And then, uh, you know, fast forward a few months later, you're able to, it's, you know, one of the sports that's able to continue beach volleyball is um, outdoors and everything, uh, even with the global pandemic going on. So kind of just talk about how that transition was and how crazy things were there for a few months. Yeah, I mean, obviously the start of that was was pretty insane. Um, uh, we had always talked about with Coach Cash, um, just kind of being always like every day is your senior day. And uh, my I just didn't know that that was that was going to apply to life. So so real in my senior year, actually. And um you, you know, you're, you're about to go play. We're about to go play two top 15 teams in the country. And then um, we're having our last practice before about to, about to get on the bus and like a, a, the next day. And then all of a sudden um, you get a call like in the middle of practice, right before practice starts. And um, you're, they're just like, Hey, season's over. And uh, thankfully we we're still able to have our last practice. Uh, we, we convinced the uh, coach to kind of still let us have that. Um, because I, I thought that was important in order to, to, to at least have something under our, our name and just kind of uh, go out on our own terms, uh, still go out on our own terms, even though um, it, the, the, the pandemic didn't really let us, uh, but, but to go out on our own terms, me and, uh, and Jay, uh, and still, still be able to, to claim something, have something as our last. Uh, and then kind of fast forward, I mean, obviously uh, I stayed on campus um, from that time until uh, they, they made us go off because uh, Harrogate was a pretty safe place for it then. Uh, not a lot of uh, not a lot of cases during the beginning of the pan pandemic and stuff like that. And uh, being in New Orleans, like it was it was having a huge spike. So uh, we thought it would be safe for me and uh, Jay, actually, because Vegas was the same way. And so uh, we thought it would be safe to stay and uh, stay there, be safer and um, pretty much. Uh, he, he really helped me out. And I, uh, I told him, I was like, I don't know when we're going to be back to normal, but when we're back to normal or any sort of, sort of normalcy, I, I want to be ready. Like, I don't, I don't want this thing to, to halt the progress that uh, I've been making that we've been making. And so um, my goal right after that, I mean, I had my, like, whatever, my week of, of uh, self pity or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and then I was like, all right, no, it's back to work. Uh, we got to be ready for, for the next step. And so, um, we started training every day. L LMU has that beach court, uh, out in the, uh, around the dorm. So that was a huge plus. And then, uh, whatever it would be, we found weights, uh, would run Hills, anything outside that we could do in order to stay active and just stay in shape and be ready. And then that kind of transitioned finally in summer, I uh, got back home in May and uh, some places were able to start opening back up and start running tournaments with precautions and stuff like that, thankfully, and uh, just hit the ground running. Um, I want to do, like I was saying, I wanted to be ready. And uh, I, I think that was a time when a lot of people weren't ready. A lot of people were like, okay, well, let's take some time off. Let's, let's reassess things. And I mean, it's the, it was like the beginning of my career. So that's the, the last thing I wanted to, to, to be able to do. So uh, I hit the ground running and uh, I haven't stopped uh, pretty much. I, I maybe had like a week or two break here and there. But um, yeah, just just trying to push my way up the ranks as much as I can right now. Obviously, you've had, um, you know, some success early in your professional career. Um, you know, how what are some things that you learned as a student athlete during your time here at Lincoln Memorial University? Uh, that has really contributed to help you be successful uh, in the early going of your professional career? Yeah, so um, beach volleyball is a little bit different than I guess any other sport as far as like a professional aspect goes and the fact that um, it's pretty self-driven. Uh, I mean, like you don't sign a contract or anything. 
uh, you don't play for a team. You are the team pretty much you and one other person and you get to choose who that person is. And uh, it's very self-driven, uh, very self uh, motivated, self oriented. And um, a big thing that helped me out a lot with that actually was uh, kind of going back if you want to go to like my freshman year, um, the first year of the, the volleyball program um, and just kind of building something, uh, you know, like we had to build a culture. We had to figure things out and uh, really, and like the whole thing is kind of like starting over um, that a whole new program, but just I'm the program instead of like creating LMU as a program, it was, I'm the program and I've got to figure out how do I want to brand myself? How do I want people to see me in the community and stuff like that? Um, Cause that's all really important. I think as a professional athlete, like you're not just trying to go and be the best that you can be, but as athletes, we are entertainers. And so um, in order, if you want people to have a following and if you want to succeed, you've got to figure out how uh, you can kind of fit into that mold um, in uh, your sport. And so um, just trying to really figure out uh, anything pretty much uh, as far, whether it be play style, uh, whether it be like my lifting regiments, uh, it, it literally any single aspect of life that you could think of. Um, LMU really prepared me for that, especially with the the starting of that program, because we had no blueprint of success. And uh, so we had to create our own blueprint and that was super awesome. And then uh, we can go into coach cash. Uh, I think the mentality that he kind of taught me uh, really was uh, a plus. Um, We talk a lot about going out and being a predator and not prey. Um, And you just got to go out there, go for the kill. I mean, uh, there's a lot of big names that uh, I have to go up against every weekend and you are the new kid on the block. So nothing's really expected of you. And uh, they are, are the, the big names. So uh, just being out, going out there, not letting them take the game to you and uh, really just trying to um, make a name for yourself. You mentioned there uh, about having to be self-motivated where beach volleyball is a little bit different than, you know, your professional team sports. What is it on a day-to-day basis uh, that, you know, keeps you going, uh, makes you want to get out of the bed and, and grind every single day um, in order, obviously, to – you have to do that to be successful. So what is it for you that kind of keeps you going uh, each and every day? Uh, I mean, I think it's like a constantly changing factor. But uh, one of the main things for me um, throughout my career, even like before going to LMU, I never was really heavily recruited or anything like – was always kind of overlooked in in areas. And so being that person that's overlooked uh, or something like that has always been a huge motivation for me. Uh, Now that I'm not, I feel like people kind of know about me a little bit. It's a little bit more difficult. So that's why I feel like it's starting to change a little bit. So now for me, it's uh, trying to make this like um, as sustainable of a lifestyle as I can and um, really trying to push it as high as I can go. I don't know where the limit's at right now. Um, so for me every day is just, let's go out and get better and let's keep trying to push that limit. Like this weekend, we just won a huge tournament, uh, probably the biggest one of my career so far. Um, and there in the tournament, there was two guys who had already won an AVP. There's guys that made finals. They're already on like the main draw, like mainstays there. Um, and so it made me realize like I could really make it to that level. And, uh, last summer, like being able to train with Olympians and stuff like that. And even going into this preseason, being able to train with Olympians, uh, and seeing that I'm not as far as I would think I was, uh, probably before training with them and, uh, really being able to see that I can take this as far as I want to. So I think that's really a big motivating factor is let's really see how far I can push this thing. Awesome. Um, Obviously, uh, you touched on, you know, having a, a doubles partner. I imagine, you know, it's kind of a little bit like professional tennis uh, for you. Is that, you know, you've had the same doubles partner this whole throughout this whole journey on the pro tour. Um, and if so, if you could talk a little bit about them or have you mixed up and played with different people? Yeah. So last summer I mixed up, played with a lot of different people. Last summer was just like a big growing experience. I wasn't really sure where I fit in as far as like who to play with and stuff like that. So my, my goal was to go out, play with as many people as I could and continue to try and climb that ladder. I mean, obviously there's kind of like a, um, a hierarchy of people you're going to get to play with better people and better people. So my goal the whole summer was just to continue, like we'll start wherever we need to start with as a partner and uh, just force people's hands. 
uh just be like hey like i won this tournament like you really need to play with me like and just like keep trying to climb that ladder and uh thankfully i've climbed it enough to get to where i am with my partner uh that i'm with right now and i've been playing with him since about october and uh it's been an awesome experience so far. He's a, he's a blocker. So I'm, I'm a defender. There's like, it's like kind of how it's split in beach volleyball. Um, and so he's massive. He's six, nine. So he's uh, definitely not a short guy. Um, and uh, it's been an awesome growing experience so far with him. I'm uh, really excited to see, see where we continue to uh, grow because um, I think we're really starting to uh, really like have good chemistry as a team. And so uh, I think we're only going to go up from here. If you could talk a little bit about the kind of, I guess, training that goes into beach volleyball. Uh, obviously, you know, you played beach volleyball even probably throughout your indoor career here at LMU um, and growing up and everything. But uh, just kind of how, how how different has it been the the training regiments or even the playing uh, because obviously men's volleyball at the collegiate level is indoors and then you go or playing outdoors and you have different uh, climates and different other factors. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start with the training regiment. That's uh, been like really different for me because um, I can kind of make my own schedule. Uh, so that was like a huge transition from college uh, to now. I mean, college, everything's kind of given to you. It's like, Hey, here's your class schedule. Hey, here's your lifting schedule. Hey, here's your practice schedule. Uh, so I went from like all of that structure and then right whenever I got out, uh, it was like, you've got to figure it all out. Uh, you don't have, a, you don't have a schedule. You've got to make your schedule. You've got to figure it all out. You got to figure out who you're practicing with. You got to figure out what kind of lifting you want to do, what's going to be more, be most beneficial to you. So that was a big learning experience there to start. But, uh, my daily schedule now, uh, I've kind of got it figured out. Um, so I coach in the mornings, uh, from like eight to 12 and then I'll practice in the afternoons and uh lift at night um so that's kind of what my day-to-day -day looks like and then um as far as uh like that uh change from indoor to outdoors there's a couple different changes so first I mean indoor we're playing like one match every two or three days uh so, but in beach volleyball it's a lot different uh you have a tournament on the weekend and it's either just Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, depending on how big it is. Uh, and you're playing, I think we played seven matches this weekend. So uh, a lot different as far as uh, like pacing yourself and you got to figure out like when's the best times to go and like really try and push yourself um, to, to win games. So it's definitely a different pace and like stamina than uh, indoor is. And then um, obviously like the playing surfaces and climate is completely different. Uh, there's a lot of like our indoor guys there that uh, we'd go out and practice on the beach and they struggle because like there it's a lot different movement in the sand. The way that you have to move and like really push off uh, is different. And then climate. Uh, the best I think example is this weekend. We were playing down here in New Orleans and uh, we're kind of known for our uh, uh, vast climate changes. So uh, like we had like we started on uh, Sunday. It was like pretty overcast and super windy out. And then we had a thunderstorm roll in for like two or three hours and like it was pouring rain. And then right after that, the sun came out and it was like 80 or 90, it was like probably like 85, 90 degrees. So uh, you've got to be ready for any of the elements and um, the play style that comes with it. Because uh, whenever you're playing in those different elements, there's different things that you have to be able to do in, uh, in order to succeed. So uh, just being adaptable like adaptable to change is a huge thing in beach volleyball i think perfect uh got a, a last two questions here uh and hopefully they're a little bit on the fun side um, i'm going to attempt to share my screen and i've got a photo and it's a photo that coach cash sent me um, of you uh training last summer i guess with a couple of olympians or mm -hmm. uh, at least professional players. So I'm going to try to share my screen. If you could just talk a little bit about them, who they are and stuff like that. Does that work? Are you able to see? Uh, yeah, there we go. I got it now. Yeah, right. so that's uh, me. Uh, my partner in that picture is John Justice, who's in the middle. Uh, and then the two guys on the outside actually uh, just qualified uh, Phil Dahlhauser on the right, the taller guy, just qualified for his fourth Olympics. 
And then the guy on the left has just qualified for his second Olympics, Nick Lucena. Uh, and we we're basically last year at that time, uh, they had like a small pro tour that was like pretty um, like, I guess it was only for like the top like 20 teams or so. And so uh, they were about to go to that and uh, we were basically their preparation for it. And I felt really good about it because they won two out of the three tournaments and got second in the third one. So I was like, I guess we're a pretty good prep. <laughs> um, but it was a super cool experience because I've gotten to train with them a couple more times also um, after that in the, the preseason this year. And uh, they're super awesome people. Uh, Phil, he, uh, for people who don't know, he won the gold medal in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Um, and uh, his partner is just like his best friend for, for a really long time. And uh, yeah, they're on the Olympic team. So it's super cool getting to pick their brain, being able to see what they do in order to be able to succeed and like how they go about their, their days and their practices and uh, just trying to figure out what they need to do in order to uh, reach their peak. Training with uh, individuals like that, uh, that have kind of reached the pinnacle of the sport, uh, how much motivation and kind of goals does that uh, give you? Oh man. Uh, like just like just being in that practice, I was, it, it's, it fires you up. Cause uh, you're able to do, if you're able to do good things against them, then you're like, okay, like I can do it. Like if, if I can do it against them, like why can't I compete against them? So uh, that's like a huge motivator because then you're like, I'm not far away. I'm able to do it. So I got to keep pushing. Awesome. Sounds like a, a really great experience uh, you've had. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Blues Nose Beach. Um, I did a little research and found that, you know, on your Instagram page, uh, something you've been promoting. Kind of where did that start? Uh, where did that come from? Yeah, so um, last summer I started wearing uh, zinc oxide sunscreen on my nose uh, because I would just go out to the beach and play in tournaments. My nose would just get fried. Like no matter what I tried, like I'd sunscreen like multiple times throughout the day, like nothing would work for the people who like don't know what zinc oxide sunscreen is it's like what those lifeguards used to wear in like the 90s and stuff like that they had like the big white block noses uh but i always have worn this blue hat and uh i was like well i'll just like make it match my hat instead of the white because the the website that i or the company i get it from uh zinca they make like 20 different colors of it and they had one that matched and i was like well this is awesome and um last summer i started wearing it and people like just started knowing me as the guy with the blue nose. So um, I was like, well, this is a great marketing opportunity. Um, can always use uh, a little more cash. And um, so I started branding it and uh, sell stuff on my website now that has the, the logo on it. And that uh, website is bluenosebeach.com? Yes. Where folks can buy stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed uh, this interview.